Welcome back to my channel, you all. Um, in this video, I was thinking about ways that we can easily organize our virtual classroom. So I started with my maintenance warm-up. So if you take a look at the agenda on the screen, it says maintenance warm-up. I have it where I could click that, or students could click that, and it'll take them to this document that contains all of my weekly warm-ups for them. Once they get to the weekly warm-up page, which is here, is view only, they could then go to whatever day it is, say today is Thursday, they could just click this link um, here and it will actually take them to the Google form that contains this warm-up. And in this particular case, this warm-up is maintenance number two and it is rounding and they simply go from there. That way, all of the document, all of the things that they need for the warm-up is stored in one location. And that way, the only thing I have to do is go back and change that Google Doc sheet weekly. So here's how I set it up initially. What I did was I went to create a Google form that contained all of my warm-ups. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in another video. But what I did was I created warm-ups one through whatever. I think I went through day 70. And after I put my warm-up question on there, I then took them and I organized them in this table right here. If you take a look, I have the maintenance number, which is the same thing as warm-up or do now. And then I also have the topic next to it. Once I did that and I wrote all of those down, I then went back and I went to my Google form and I copied the link. Once I copied the link, I went back to this document, I highlighted it, right clicked, and I clicked the word link and I pasted it there and hit apply. So moving forward from that point, this is the main database that I'll be working from. I then went and created another document which will contain my weekly warmups only. On this document, I put the directions for the students, click the link to complete today's maintenance warmup problem or problem of the day, however you want to do it, say it. You will only get one chance to submit your answer. So please take your time and be sure to carefully work out each problem. In my case, I'm going to attach another link that after they submit it, they can watch a quick video which shows how to work the problem out successfully and then they can determine whether or not they passed. And then I'll go back and go ahead and grade them and send them back to the students via email. This is a review, so have confidence that you will correctly answer the questions. You could put whatever directions on there. And then here's the um, table for this week. If there's no school, I'll just write no school. That way, if there's a student that's absent or a student that did not get a chance to go back and complete a particular one, they know that on Thursday, I did not come to school. I could go do Thursday and today is Friday and um, so on. Once I got to that, I shared this document, but I shared this document with the link. Once I shared this document with the link, I made it where it is view only. And once I made it where it's view only, I took that link and I went to my classroom. Once I got to my classroom, I went to my agenda, I highlighted it, I right clicked, I click link and I link that document to it. So now once I go in present mode, the students will come to my Google Classroom, to their virtual classroom, um, and they will then go ahead and click the agenda and it takes them to that page. What I'm gonna do is I am going to actually link my next class, my next week. That way everything is there and you can actually see. If you completely understand how I did it, awesome. If you want another quick example, I am going to do it right now. So I am going to go to file. I'm actually going to make a copy of this because this is the next week. I am going to change the date. It's going to be the 17th. And in this case, I'm sharing it with myself. 
Once that document load, once that document load, I am going to go to my main page, which is here. And I know that I left off with maintenance warm up number three. So I'm going to take four through seven because it's a full five day week. I'm going to right click. I am going to actually copy. Then I'm going to go over to my weekly maintenance and I'm going to highlight all of this and I am going to paste it. Here are my new links. I then need to go ahead and change the date to the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and August 21st. I will then go ahead and share. I will share, I will copy the link. It's already set to anyone on the internet with this link can view, view only. So I'm gonna copy the link. And I am going to go to the next week. Get out of present mode. Here's the next week, which is August 17th through 21st. I'm going to click on the maintenance warm up and highlight it. Right click, hit link, and I am going to paste and apply. Now, to make sure I did it correctly, I'm gonna go ahead to present mode. I'm gonna double check everything. Again, this is for week August 17th through 21st. When the students come in, they should go ahead and work on the do now, which is the warm up. In this case, it's one quick problem. I see the title at the top. It is named correctly. And here I have weeks. 8.17 on down. So let's go ahead and click one just to make sure. Doesn't matter if you click the word maintenance warm up or real world because I highlighted all the way across. And once I click that, the student will, here's maintenance number five, real world context. And here it is. Okay. Once they finish, once they go ahead and type it in, Hit submit. The reason why I put last name too is because some students have a tendency to just put their first name and there's multiple students with that same name that you may teach. I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to adjust all of this later. I just want to go ahead and get it set up. So now a student has been absent and they come to me and say, hey, did I take, did I do my warm up? They could simply just go ahead and click it. And if they click the link, they'll tell them that they already responded. And then they could go do the other ones, okay? So that is a quick tutorial on how you could possibly set up and start organizing your Bitmoji virtual classroom. So that way everything is kind of, located in one location. I hope you all were able to find this video helpful and good luck in creating your virtual classrooms. And I will see you all on the next video. Have a great day.